Masya'Allah Muhammad Hasnan Bargai Husayliyat Mein Nagarana Yaqidat Pish Karma Rahe Thay Ab Mein Naki Rasul Al-Mubhul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Sallam Ke Liye Dabad Nura Peer Sayyid Zayz Rasul Shah Sahab Bade Piyari Andaz Mein Naki Rasul Al-Mubhul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Sallam Pish Karma Rahe Thay Khandani Sadaat Se Hai Jin Ki Mehfar Hai Unni Ki Khandani Se Hai Inshallah, Muhammad ke saath kalami paar peish karmayin ge. Narae Tafir, Narae Risalat, Aur, Bhoot Badi Khush Khabri ki aaj ye baat hai, Kya mishay program hukti hai, Mai maan, Late tashriq raati hai. Aaj, Khuda ka aisa fadal hai, Aur, Yeh Haslain ki mehn, Sadka hai, Kya humare, Sare mai maan tashriq farmaya hai, Khari Tayyip sahab ki tashriq le aya hai, Woh upar namaz ada farmaya hai, Woh bhi tashriq le aya hai, Sare mai maan tashriq farmaya hai, محبت کے ساتھ بیٹھیں پروگرام کو سنیں اور سننے کے بعد دعا کریں کہ اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب کو عمل کی توفیق کریں Amen. <laughs> 
छेंगे मदीना जदू ਫਿਰ ਉਹ ਕੀ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਵੇ ਫੁਕਾਹ ਨੇ ਫਰਮਾਇਆ ਕਿ ਹੁਣ ਉਹਨੂੰ 
ਅਗਰ ਉਹ ਦੇ ਤੌਰ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਵੇਖਣ ਨਾਲ ਇਹ ਮਹਿਸੂਸ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਕਿ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਹੀ ਅਲਾਮਤ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੌਜੂਦ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਉਹਦਾ ਜਨਾਜ਼ਾ ਪੜ੍ਹ ਲਓ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਅਲਾਮਤ ਖੁਦਾ ਨਾ ਖਾਸਤਾ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਹੋਣ ਕਿ ਅਦਰੋਂ ਗਾੜੀ ਦੀ ਲੈਣ ਇਹ ਕਿਚੀ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਅਦਰੋਂ ਇਹ ਕਿਚੀ ਹੋਵੇ ਤੇ ਸਿਰ ਉੱਤੇ ਲੈਣਾ ਹੋਣ ਤੇ ਵੱਲਾ ਮੈਂ ਲੱਗ ਕਸਮ ਤੋਂ ਕਿ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਕਿ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਕਾਫਰ ਹੈ ਕੋਈ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਮੈਂ ਕੋਈ ਝੂਠ ਤੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਿਆ ਬੋਲਦਾ ਕਿਆ ਮੈਂ ਸਹੀ ਗੱਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਿਆ ਕਰਦਾ ਵੇਖਿਆ ਕੋਈ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਕਿ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਗੈਰ ਮੁਸਲਮ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਈ ਵਾਰੀ ਰਾਸਤੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਿਲੇ ਤੇ ਝਿਜਕ ਜਾਈ ਤਾਂ ਸਲਾਮ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰੀਦਾ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਵੀ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਨਾਨ ਮੁਸਲਮ ਹੈ ਝਿਜਕ ਜਾਈ ਤਾਂ ਵੇ ਮੈਂ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਿਲਚਾ ਸੀ ਆਕੀ ਅਸਲਾਮ ਅਲੈਕਮ ਤੇ ਹੋਵੇ ਕ੍ਰਿਸਚੀਅਨ ਦਿਲਚਾ ਇਹ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਸਲਾਮ ਅਲੈਕਮ ਆਪਣ ਦਾ ਹੁਕਮ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੇ ਸਿਰਫ ਅਸਲਾਮ ਹੀ ਕਾਫੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਬੰਦਾ ਕੀ ਕਰੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਸਾਰਾ ਇਮਾਮ ਹਸਨ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਸਮਝਾਣਗੇ ਇਨਸ਼ਾਅੱਲਾ ਤਾਲਾ ਉਲ ਅਜ਼ੀਜ਼ ਹੁਣ ਮੈਂ ਬਿਨਾ ਤਖੀਰ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨੌਜਵਾਨਾਂ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਦਾਵਤ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਦਾਵਤ ਦੇ ਕਿਤਾਬ ਦੇਵਾਂਗਾ حضرت علامہ امام عاصم صاحب نو تشریف لے اوندے نے انگلش وچ پڑھے اگے کتاب فرماندے نے تسی بڑا کیئرفلی بڑے دھیان نال انہاں دا کتاب سننا ہے اور سننے تو بعد کوشش کرنی ہے کہ اپنے اندر کوئی چینجنگ ہوے اور اے ہی در حقیقت امام حسین دا پیغام بھی ہے امام حسین نے جڑی اپنے نانا دے دین واسطے قربانی دتی ہے ایسے وجہ تو قربانی دتی ہے کہ میرے نانا دی امت ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਮੇਰੀ ਸੀਰਤ ਨੂੰ ਮੇਰੇ ਕਿਰਦਾਰ ਨੂੰ ਅਪਣਾ ਲੈਣ ਔਰ ਆਪਣਾ ਹੁਲੀਆ ਆਪਣਾ ਕਿਰਦਾਰ ਆਪਣੀ ਸੀਰਤ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੀ ਬਣਾ ਲੈਣ ਕਿ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਹੁਕਮ ਮੇਰੇ ਨਾਨਾ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀਆਂ ਉਮਤੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਵੇ ਅੱਲਾਹ ਤਾਲਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਮਲ ਦੀ ਤੋਫੀਕ ਅਨਾਇਤ ਫਰਮਾਏ ਨਾਰਾਇ ਤਕਬੀਰ ਨਾਰਾਇ ਰਿਸਾਲਤ ਨਾਰਾਇ ਤਹਕੀਕ ਨਾਰਾਇ ਹੈਦਰੀ ਸ਼ਹਦਾਏ ਕਰਬਲਾ Before I begin, I would like to welcome Qari Tayyib Al-Shbandi Saab, Qari Saab Sultani Saab, Qibla Imam Saab of this masjid, and the uh, rest of you who have been waiting here patiently. Alhamdulillah, there's a, it's a fantastic turnout to see so many young brothers here, cramped in this hall. The majority of you are probably youngsters, who are in the early teens going up towards the 30s. It's good to see so many of you here, Brother Waqas, who arranged this and got in touch with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. Amen. He was in his life. Amen. He went through a lot of hard work and effort to get through to me and then now to start or arrange this event or talk here in Brightfield. It's the first time I'm here. I do have a one or two Uh, colleagues and good friends that used to study with me in Jami Al-Karam who are also uh, members of the Pryfield public. I don't know if they're here. Mohan Nadeem Sabur Saab? Is he here? He's, uh, he's a second imam. Mashallah, he's a very good friend of mine. He got in touch with me. But the Asad Ali is here as well. I've seen him coming. So Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless all of you guys, inshallah. <laughs> for an hour or so, I will talk, inshallah. I won't be talking 30 minutes and you've been waiting here for two hours. So inshallah, I will talk for an hour or so and then in the Qari Tayyip Club, they will be delivering their talk in the Urdu language. I hope that all of you, inshallah, will pay attention to what I have to say. We'll be talking about modern times, how we are growing up today, how we are being affected, influenced by uh, Western desires and desires of our hearts, and how we should change that. And inshallah, I will relate it all to Sayyidina Imam Hussain ibn Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala al-Imam. Before I begin, if everyone can read one surah Fatiha Shreef for the Shukhadai Karbala, Then, inshallah, at the end, we can present all of this as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all this hadiyah and mizrana that we present to the Shukhadai Karbala in his barga. And the Shuhadai Karbala also accept this from us. Amen. And through the Sadqa, Wasila, and Barkat of this Surah Al-Fatish that we recited, 
Allah Almighty remove all our mushkilat, musibat, for khair, but that Allah sukoon into our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me tawfiq to speak the truth. Allah give you all tawfiq to listen to the truth. Wa ma tawfiqi illa billahi l'alihi l'alihi. Alhamdulillah. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وموالاه أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى صدق الله مولانا العظيم سمي البردروش في بري الله وصل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد المعدن الدود والكرم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا كد الحسن والحسين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم After praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى and sending infinite durood Salutation, peace, and blessings, and salam upon the best of creation, upon the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him so that he may unveil his majesty before him, the one that Allah Almighty swore by his life, and Allah Almighty took an oath by the city that he was born in. The one who is the coolest to our eyes, the one who is the purpose of our lives, the one who is the light of our hearts, the one who is the Iman, the one who is Islam, and no doubt the one who is the Quran. That is none other than Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah. صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Whenever we hear Nabi عليه الصلاة والسلام name, each and every one of us should send درود and salam upon them. And the most beautiful thing about this is that it doesn't cost a penny. I know everyone is looking for bargain. There's no greater bargain than Durud and Salam. There's no greater deal than this. You will say, Imam Sahib, what's the hot deal? And Imam Sahib will say to you what Imam Bukhari said, or what Imam Muslim and all the great muhaddithin have narrated, from the great Sahaba who narrated this hadith, and narrated many ahadith on the fada'il, regarding the virtues of sending durood and salam from the Prophet If only our younger brothers and sisters knew what it meant 
and how important it was to send durood and salam upon the Prophet then we wouldn't find ourselves in the difficulties that we find ourselves in today. We are in this circumstance that we are today, Muslims throughout the entire world, Muslims throughout the entire world, whether they are in Pakistan, whether they are in Afghanistan, whether they are in the West America or Europe, whether they are in the UK, whether in Africa, we sadly as Muslims on a collective basis have left Rasulullah zikr. We do not remember Nabi enough in our lives. This doesn't mean that if I remember him a lot, I'm doing a lot. We will never be able to do enough for him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Allah Almighty remembers him. And who can compete in the remembrance of Allah? Wala dhikrullahi akbar. The remembrance of Allah is great. And remembering Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in actual fact is remembering Allah Almighty. Remembering Nabi salam is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you remember Nabi salam, you are doing an amal, an action that Allah Almighty Himself does. You are performing that deed that Allah Almighty does. I'll give you one example and inshallah I will begin my khitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Sayyiduna, when Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salatu salam was created, Allah Almighty said to all his angels, every single one of them, that out of ta'zim, out of honor and respect for this first human that I've created, this Prophet of Allah Almighty, go and bow down to him. All the angels, including Hazrat Jibra'il alayhi salatu salam, Hazrat Mika'il alayhi salatu salam, Hazrat Israel alayhi salatu salam, wa Hazrat Israfil alayhi salatu salam. All the angels, Malakul Mawk, every angel Allah created, went and out of respect and honor to Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu salam, they bowed down to him. This was an act of obedience. This was an act to obey Allah Almighty, please Allah Almighty. There was one munkir, one who said, no. He used to believe in Allah Almighty. He believed, he's a, he's a muhid, he's a tawheed. He believes in tawheed. He believes in la ilaha illallah. He didn't reject that. What he rejected was the ta'zim of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He rejected the ta'zim of Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu He didn't reject the tawheed of Allah. He accepted the tawheed of Allah. He believed in one Allah. He used to read namaz. Lama Sabi rahmatullah alayhi in his hashiyah of Jalalain Sharifain. In there, Lama Sabi rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi mentions what shaitan was before he became mar'oon, mardood. Before he was rejected and cursed, he used to be called all the best names, Arif, Abid, in different heavens. He did tawaf around the Kaaba for thousands of years. The Kaaba that was in the heavens and Baytul Ma'mur. He was somebody who was promoted to such an extent that he became the teacher of all the angels. Imagine that. You have everything. You've got it all. You're the teacher of the angels, you do tawaf around the Kaaba, you've got all these beautiful names, everything. You believe in Allah, you do everything. <laughs> but when Allah Almighty said, all of you bow down to Adam alayhi salam, Shaitan said, I don't bow down to anyone other than Allah. He said, I can't do this. My Tawheed teaches me to only worship Allah, but he didn't understand respect. He understood what worship was, but he didn't understand ta'zim, respecting. You see, respect's a key word in our lives. How many of us look for respect? Just to get respect, we will adopt ways that go against Islam.
Islam. Just to get respect, we will wear what the people want to see. Because it's summer, he'll come out in his shorts like a laddu. He'll come out like that, I'll tell you. He'll come out in his shorts, flashing his hairy legs off. Just to prove a point. Okay, I'm one of the boys, I'm Jack the lad. I'm one of the lads, you see, I gotta go in the crowd. Just for a bit of respect. Just for a bit of respect. He doesn't have the money, but on Eid he'll hide the flashiest car. He doesn't have the money, really. He has to grow it, but he's got to get that car, you see, that respect. He's got to maintain the image. It's all about the image for young lads, isn't it? It's all about how I look. To look cool, I've got to put three slits in here like I've been electrocuted. <laughs> like lightning ball has hit me. No doubt lightning has hit him. Shaitan's lightning hit him. On either day, he's got three slits in his eyebrow thinking some bad boy. <laughs> he does his beard up, thinking he's some guy, and then, you know what I'm amazed that is? He shows that face to his mother. Bro, what are you playing at, man? The same face you show to your mother? Did your mother bring you up so that you may put slits in your eyebrow? Did your mother bring you up so that you be a gangster? Your mother didn't bring you up to be a gangster, to blow up cars, to nick stereos. Your mother didn't bring you up so that you may have illegal relationships. She brought you up to be a Muslim. You forgot what a Muslim is. And you got so lost in this dunya that you forgot what Iman is. You forgot the value of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Respect's a big word in today's day and age, I tell you. Every young lad, even old people, many izzat. Izzat is a big word. Me, you know, this me. Me, you know, I've got a big me. You know, shaitan had me. You know where the first act of egocentric nature me, it's all about me. Me, myself, and I. Who seen that movie? <laughs> See, they made a movie on this, me, myself, and I. This uh, me, myself, and I mentality, who was the first to endorse this? It's shaitan. When Allah said to shaitan, why don't you bow down? He said, I, I am made from fire. He is made from clay. I am better than him. I am better than him. I am made from fire. Why shall I bow down to him? Why should I? Look at that. He didn't understand what Allah Almighty was saying. See, when the angel said they knew more, Allah Almighty said, you think you know more than Adam? Go and ask him the names of everything. He'll teach you every name. I said, if Adam and Islam knew the names of everything, do you not think the Imam of Adam knows everything? <laughs> if Adam and Islam knows the names of everything, and if you read in Tafsir, Adur al Mansur, all these different Tafasir, the ulama here, Qurtubi Sharif, you read all of these great Tafasir, these commentaries of the Quran, when you do the Tafsir of this ayat, وَأَلَّمَ Adam al Asma'a kullaha. When he taught Adam the names of everything, Kullaha, everything, the name of every animal, the name of every tree, everything, Allah taught him those names. If Allah Almighty taught Adam salam, the names of everything, Hatta <coughs> they know the names of those who are going into Jannah and those who are going into Jahannam, then do you think Nabi salam doesn't know? How can you even say that? How can you comprehend that? Just a little look that. Because I'm in the mood and the group. <laughs> Just a little point. According to Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala, the one who is most worthy to be the Imam is the one who has the most knowledge. Quran and Sunnah. He is the one who is most worthy to be the Imam. After him, the one who has the most beautiful voice and all the conditions are listed. Uduri Shri, the Dayah Shri, and the on the night of Mi'raj, Nabi Ali Salatu Salam came to Masjid Al-Aqsa. <coughs> Allahu Akbar, today look what's happening in Palestine. Look what's happening in Gaza. 
Jerusalem. How our Palestinian brothers and sisters are being butchered by the Zionists. It's the reality. Nobody is our friend. The believers are friends of one another. In the Mu'minina, Bekhwa. We are friends of one another. You know what's the sad thing? We have this gang culture everywhere you go. I've done many lectures in my time. I'm only 22 years old. But I've done many lectures in my time. Many times I've been to Birmingham. I'm Khatib in Manchester, alhamdulillah, with your dua. Many places. <coughs> everywhere I go, I always get a... Somebody fills me in of how it is in that town. They all say there's this gang culture. Bradford West bowling crew versus the Oak Laners. Then the Oak Laners versus the BD9. BD9 versus BD8. Here it's BD, B, BD, BB8 versus BB9 and BB9 versus BB10. Burnley versus Nelson and Nelson versus Bryfield, Bryfield, Nelson. I haven't made it to the Premier League, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've never been to the Premier League, Bryfield. Inshallah, never know one day some uh, Arab injection might come into it. Some petrol dollars and you get Okay. Well, this gang culture. I'm in this gang and I'm in that gang. So, wherever I've been, I've asked and it's a common problem. My gang, I've got to be, I've got a crew that I roll with. These are my boys, innit? My boys, they're never going to let me go. These boys are never going to let me go. Man, they're there for me. Brother, when you stand in that box in front of the judge, you're going down for shot in cocaine, or heroin, or skunk or weed, or you're going down for some big arson attack, you're going down for some murder, manslaughter. Brother, tell me where your boys are going to be at that time. Where are they? Are they there in the witness box with you? Are they going to defend you? They say, bro, take the blame. I don't want to go down. It sounds funny because of the way I'm putting it, but it's the reality. You don't see it. You think you're a gangster. You're not a gangster, lad. You're not a gangster. You don't know what gangsters do. You don't know how gangsters roll. You don't know how mean they are. You think you're mean. You're a plastic gangster. You're not the real thing. You think you've got it. You don't have it. You don't even made it there. You think so. You think you've, you've got it. You think you're the thing now. Because you're in a little bright field and you can bully some people. <laughs> it's true, you think you can push them around. You got ten men, you you go to the gym, big wow. You go to the gym, big wow. David versus Goliath. Dawood versus Jalu. Allah Almighty talks about it in the Quran. Allah. Read how Goliath was it's a story that's mentioned by the Christians. The story mentioned in the Quran, David versus Goliath. We've all heard of this story. As a Dawood was ten times smaller than Jal. Goliath was ten times his size. They said that Dawood Islam's armor took his entire body. That's how big his armor, that's how compared to, that's how big Jalai's armor was. It took his full body, head to toe was filled with armor. Who defeated him? How did he defeat him? Allahu Akbar. When Allah wants to destroy someone, when Allah wants to teach you a lesson, where there was Jalut, there was Dawood. Where there was Fir'aun, there was Musa. Where there was Nimrud, there was Ibrahim a.s. Allah teaches you a lesson. Where you're a bad boy, there'll be someone good there to teach you. Where you think you're bad, Allah will send someone good in your life to say, Mia, that's not your way. This is not the way you should be. Shaitan, go back to the point of respect. He said, I was it Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah, that was the point where I was on. When they arrived, Rasulullah Islam to Masjid al Aqsa, Jerusalem. All the Anbiya Muslim are standing there. Allah Akbar. They were standing there with their soul and with their body. Amazing. Well, they, was it Musa <coughs> a.s. in his grave before? Now he's in the masjid. Allah Akbar. It tells you what? It tells you that the Anbiya a.s. can be in a hundred places at one time. Allah has opened the doors 
for them. It's easy for them, not hard for them. This is through what Allah gives them. <coughs> Musa is there, Yusuf is there, Ibrahim is there. Ibrahim Khalilul Rahman, Khalilullah. Allah Akbar. Ibrahim is the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he's my best friend. He's my Khalil. The one who Allah tested to Ismail salam, to the fire, Nimrud. <coughs> they were there. <coughs> As if Yusuf alayhi salam, Husnay Yusuf. The beauty was there. As if Musa alayhi salam, Jalil Qadr Sahab, uh, Nabi of Allah Almighty, Rasul of Allah Almighty. Powerful Nabi of Allah Almighty. They were there. Hazrat Zakaria alayhi salam, Dawud alayhi salam, Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam, Allah Akbar. You know Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam was given powers. You know what his powers that Allah gave him? He could control the wind. He said to the wind, blow fast, it would blow fast. He said, slow down, it would slow down. Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam had control over humans and jinnah. The big army. Good story for everyone to know. Suleiman alayhi salam is flying in the air and in Surah al Namal, you know Namal? Kiri. Kiri in it. Little ant. It's Chunti. It's a little ant. Yeah? This Namal, this uh, ant, you know what it said to all the ants? You see, you know how ants work? They united. The ants are one. The leader leads, everyone is in one row. Today, when you stand in the dinner queue, stand in line, we wouldn't listen to nobody. Even if there's food, everyone runs towards it. There's no queues. Look, there's no organization amongst us. But look how clever ants are, how organized they are. The ant knew that Suleiman al-Islam's army is coming. It's a big army. Allahu Akbar, how does an ant know? Someone would think, how does the ant know Suleiman alayhi salam's army coming? I believe even ants have knowledge of the unseen. Oh. Allah gives ants this knowledge of the unseen. They, they, she knew that, look, I've got to prepare here. This army is coming. Suleiman alayhi salam, salam, he could hear everything. He could hear everything. Three miles distant, he heard the ant. What is this ant saying? He said, bring the ant to me. When they spoke and conversed, Sulaiman al-Islam said to the ant, tell me, who's the greatest in the world? Who's the best? The ant said, I am. <laughs> me. Sulaiman al-Islam says, do you know who you're talking to? I'm the Nabi of Allah. Allah's giving me these powers. The ant said, shall I tell you why I'm the best? You're the Nabi of Allah and I'm standing in your hand. <laughs> I'm standing in your hand. You're the Nabi of Allah, no doubt. But how great is my Muqaddar and Maqam? <laughs> that I'm standing in the hand of a Nabi of Allah. <laughs> three months, three days, three miles distance, Suleiman al-Islam heard. If Hazrat Suleiman al-Islam, a Nabi of Allah, could hear from three miles away, then do you not think the Imam of Suleiman al-Islam could hear from thousands of miles away? Oh, so if I say, as salatu wa salamu alaykum, Ya Rasulullah, they can't hear me? Of course they can't. If Hazrat Suleiman al-Islam can hear, then Nabi al-Islam is greater than Hazrat Suleiman al-Islam. They all anbiya were there. So now, Jamaat Khaim has come. Who's going to lead the prayer? Everyone has a good argument. I am the Khalid. I am Najib, I am the chosen, I am this, all, I've got the beauty, I've got the control, the power. But Hazrat Jibreel said, Ya Rasulullah, you are the one who will lead them. <laughs> and Imam Abu Hanifa said, the one who has the most knowledge will lead. Nabi Alayhi Salaam has the most knowledge, that's why they left. <laughs> if you go by the condition of voice, Nobody had a voice like Nabi al Islam. If you go by the condition of Husan and Jamal, nobody had the Husan of Rasulullah Salam. Any condition you put forward, Nabi al Islam superseded all the Anbiya. 
This is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam and Islam all the names, Shaitan, he said, look, I'm not going to bow down to him. I'm better than him. I am better than him. Shaitan was somebody who disobeyed Allah Almighty because he, not because he believed in Tawheed, because he read Namaz, because he looked good, not because, because he disrespected the Nabi of Allah. That's why he became Mal'oon Mardud. Today, my question to you is, those who disrespect Nabi Salam, what is going to be their heart? If for disrespecting Adam Salam, he became Mardud, Mal'oon, rejected, cursed, going to the hellfire, then the one who is Gustaf, Sayyidul Anbiya Iwal Mursaleen, I would like to think what his maqam would be, where he would be. For disrespecting Nabi Alisa. Khair, the point I was going to make on Dulu Shri, which is taking me half an hour to make, because I'm elaborating. Allah Almighty commanded all the angels to bow down to Adam Alayhi Salaam, but Allah Almighty didn't bow down to Adam. Allah said to the angels, bow down to Adam, but Allah Almighty didn't. Fast forward to Nabi Alayhi Salaam's time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Allah Almighty said, O oh, angels, bow down to Adam, but I don't bow down. You are doing ta'zim to Adam, all of you bow down to him. And you know why they bow down? You want to know? Because they seen something in Adam alayhi salam. They seen something, the truth in that. You know what that truth was? It was the life, Batore Amanat. Not the life, the nur. That was gifted to Adam alayhi salam. And that would be in the sulb of Adam alayhi salatu salam, in the loins of Adam alayhi salam. The angel seen that light shining and glowing on the forehead of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. And out of ta'zim, not only did they do sajda to Adam alayhi salam, out of ta'zim, they did sajda to the nur of Rasulullah alayhi salam. Out of respect. Respect is the key word here. Khair. Allah said to the angels, all of you bow down to Adam. When it came to the zikr of Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam, when it came to Nabi alayhi salam's remembrance, to remember him, Allah didn't say, indeed, I and my angels. Allah didn't say, indeed, the merciful and his angels. Allah didn't say that. You know what Allah Almighty said? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, inna Allah, indeed Allah. Allah took his own name. He used his own name and said, indeed Allah and his angels. Indeed Allah, whose angels? Allah's angels. Every angel is Allah Almighty. Indeed Allah and his angels, they send what? Drood and salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If Allah Almighty and his angels send it, then Allah Almighty is the most merciful, he's generous, he's kind, he's latifun, he is generous to his servant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, after mentioning that he sends durood and salam, his angels send durood and salam, Allah Almighty said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu tasbeen. Allahumma salli ala sallimu. Allah Almighty said, O you who have iman, O you who possess iman, when you hear my Habib's name, Sallu alayhi, send salat upon him. Send prayers upon him. Send salat upon him and send salam upon him. As-salamu alayka, Ya Rasulullah. As-salatu wa salam. Salat and salam are in this sentence. Included in here. When you hear his name, you send durood and salam on him. Look, Allah doesn't pray when he tells me and you to pray. Allah doesn't fast when he tells me and you to fast. Allah Almighty doesn't do Hajj, but he said believers do Hajj. 
Allah Almighty doesn't give zakat, but he told me and you to give zakat. There's only one thing that Allah Almighty does, and he told us to do, and that was when Allah Almighty said, when my Habib is remembered, I remember him, you remember him. I do his zikr, you do his zikr as well. Don't be stingy, don't be bakhili. You know, Nabi alayhi salam said, Bakhil, you know, bukhal. Bukhal can juicy. Can juice, maki juice. <laughs> you know that saying. You know what a bukhal is? Nabi alayhi salam said, you know, bakhil isn't the one who has money and doesn't give it. People think bukhal is ke oh maal daar hai. Oh, they have paise hain. Oh, paise nahi dhe ta. Sahabat nahi hai. Bakhili hai. We think this is bukhal. You know what Nabi Ali Salam said is Bukhat? Nabi Ali Salam said, the stingy man, the stingy one is he. When he hears my name, he doesn't say Allahumma salli ala Allah. That's the stingy man. He's the bankrupt one. He could have all the money in the world, but he has no real dollar, no jadat there, nothing there. All of this lies in the name of Rasulullah sallallahu So when you hear Nabi Ali Salam's name, then keep your tongue moist. When you say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi salatu salam once, Allah blesses you ten times. Allah. And they say Nabi Ali Salam's name has no barakah. <laughs> Allah Almighty Nabi Ali Salam said, you remember me once, Allah will remember you ten times. Allah. You send prayers upon me once, Allah will send ten upon you. Allah. Not only will he send ten upon you, he will, he will remove ten of your bad deeds. Allah. He will remove ten of your bad deeds. And Allah Almighty will raise you by ten darajah. And Allah Almighty will fulfill ten of your hajah. <laughs> Three in this dunya, seven in the akhirah. Allah. The name of Rasulullah has so much barakah. Do you not think Nabi alayhi salam zaat has barakah? If Nabi alayhi salam's name has so much power, so much blessing, then do you think Nabi alayhi salam themselves don't have this power of blessing? How can it be? How can you even think that? If you accept Nabi alayhi salam's name brings barakah in your life, then also accept that Nabi alayhi salam zaat will bring barakah in your life. Allah. Allah. Bring blessing and we are all looking for these blessings. Our youngsters are looking for guidance. You young lads are looking for somebody to look up to. You're looking for somebody to emulate. You see, human nature is that you always look up to things. If you see something better than him, you want it. That's human nature. Who can be better than Rasulullah Why do you define your own nature? Why do you defy your own nature? By not following Nabi Ali Salam because he's the best. Look, if he has a car, somewhere in your mind you say, you know what, I want to beat that car. I want a better car than his. I want a bigger house than him. Human nature. This is our nature. I've got to be better than him. This man, me, it's that nature that man has inside him. That's the battle in it. You think Allah created you without a purpose. <coughs> You think Allah Almighty created you without any maqsad? There is a maqsad for you. There's a purpose for why you are here. You weren't here to be a gangster brother. You weren't here to be a bad boy. You weren't here to dress like the non-Muslims. You were here. <coughs> you were here to follow Rasulullah Sunnah. Right. You were here to build a connection with Allah Almighty. You are here to worship Allah Almighty. You are here to worship your ego and desires. You are here to follow your ego and desire. You are here for that reason, I'm telling you. You think you were created so that you could go out and earn? No doubt. Look, people say, Imam Sahib, all you Mulbi say is read namaz and do tasbih. That's all you preach. Look, if everyone was reading namaz and doing tasbih, who would be a doctor to cure you? Who would be a lawyer to fight your case? Who would be a teacher to teach you? We need teachers, we need lawyers, we need doctors, we need educated people, no doubt. No doubt, we need that. And sadly, in that department, we are behind as well. 
I'll give you a, a statistic. You know politics? Big thing. Politics plays a big thing in this world. Massive. American politics, British politics, politics, big Pakistani politics, you know how it is. <laughs> Amazing, you know how Pakistani politics are? One news channel, you'll have 10 politicians fighting on it. And not only that, the same, you flip down, you go to another news channel, it's the same thing. There's a woman sat there, three men, and all they do is shouting. You can't hear them. This is wrong, this is wrong, that's wrong. Yar, go fight in the court, not on TV. If you're going to do so much, do it properly. Politics, you got BBC News, they have news, uh, House of uh, Commons channel as well, where in there you see the debates that go on between MPs. <coughs> Muslims' population is 2.5 million in the UK. 2.5 million in the UK, we are. The Yahudis, the Jews, they number 250,000 to 500,000 in the UK. Muslims have around five to six members of parliament. The Yehudis have over 16 members of parliament. If you want to pass a law, you need your own people in there. Who's in there? So we need politicians who are just who are on the deen. Those who are amil -e sunnah Those who think about the deen. Who think about Rasulullah yes, you should. Who think about Nabi who think about Nabi alayhi salatu salam's maqam, the best interests of the Muslims. We need politicians, we need doctors, we need lawyers, we need teachers, we need all of these. Two tissues. <laughs> we need <laughs> tissues. <laughs> Not only do we need that, we need tissues. <laughs> we need these things. So nobody says that we become a Sufi, Basafa, Arif Billah, that's it, leave the whole dunya. Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullah, Alayhi, Imam Azam, the great Imam of Fiqh, who told us about the deen. Imam Azam, Rahmatullah, Alayhi, was a great merchant. He was a businessman. Nabi Ali Salatu Salam themselves used to do business. They would go on trading caravan journeys. This teaches us that Nabi Ali Salatu Salam used to work. We need to work to live. Nabi alayhi salam, if they wanted, could have everything. They are mukhtari kul. They have the freedom, choice, ability for everything. Allah could give. When Nabi alayhi salam, when they went to Ta'if, to do tabligh, to spread Islam, we should spread Islam. How do we spread Islam in today's day and age? We act upon the sunnah. When somebody looks at you and says, brother, why have you got a beard? You don't say, I've got a beard because my dad told me to keep it. <laughs> you say, I've got a beard because my master used to have a beard. Nabi oh, no. alayhi salam had a beard. I resemble the Prophet alayhi salam. I don't resemble these footballers and pop stars. Sadly, look at us. These zigzags in the beard. These designs. Why? If you're going to keep it, keep it properly. If you're not ready to keep it, put something on your face. You know, what's the difference between you and a non-Muslim? Look, Sikhs have the same color as us. More or less, we are from the same land, India, Pakistan, Hindus. If I was to put one of our lads and a young Sikh lad there, he's shaved, he's shaved. How would you tell the difference? Don't worry about the Qara and all that. How would you tell the difference? You couldn't. You think he's a Muslim. I, many times I gave Salah, because Paji Kiyad. <laughs> I gave him salam because Paji Kiyal. <laughs> How do I know who he is? But he knows I'm a Muslim. You see, those who keep very long beards. Very long beards. No doubt, keeping a long beard. Abdullah bin Umar, radiallahu ta'ala. Those who keep their moustache really big. Sikhs have big moustaches, long beards. How do we differentiate our beards from them? Nabi alayhi salam said, when you keep a beard, keep it clean. Smart. It looks good. There's some people who are Muslim with their beards all over the place. MashaAllah. Okay? <coughs> <coughs> so we, who are we following? Who do we look up to? Nabi alayhi salatu salam went to Ta'if. In Ta'if they were doing tabligh. Calling people to Islam. People, 
the leaders of Taif, the governors, the, the men in charge, the politicians, they said to all the children, pick up stones and stone him. Nabi Ali Salaam was stoned for Islam, to spread his deen. What have you ever done for Islam? Tell me, what have we done for Islam? Tomorrow, on the day of Qiyamah, <coughs> what if Nabi Ali Salaam said, when you was alive, there were people who disrespected me, who dishonored me. How did you defend my maqam? How did you uphold my way? Did you act on my sunnah? Imagine I turned to Nabi Salaam and I don't have the sunnah on my face. Do they recognize me? Do I look like his ummati? Or do I look like a gangster? Brother, make your mind up what you want to be. Do you want to be a Muslim or do you